with Hazard Zone being the best source of experience in Battlefield 2042 between the three main ways to play. More and more people are inquiring about the game type. Today's video is a 10 tips and tricks for you guys to win more at Hazard Zone. I have put quite a few hours into it. I love playing it myself. And there's a lot of little things that you don't discover inside the tutorial that if you do learn, you can help chain victories back to back. And if you get good with it, it rewards you more XP than almost anything else in this game. So without further ado, let's start the list with number one. This is selecting the right characters and specialists for your thing. Team comp is huge. And there are three that I recommend you really to make sure that you include inside of your runs. Only one of them I consider to be a must have, and that is Angel. He is capable of continuously resupplying your squad with ammo and armor. Two things that you will run out of consistently in this experience. And he keeps you guys loaded up with it. Not only that, but it's important for the economy side of Hazard Zone. Nobody has to worry about buying ammo boxes or armor plates because he's got you covered. Lastly, and this is something that not a lot of people talk about for him, his loadout crate is very valuable for Hazard Zone because it replenishes all of your ammo. That includes explosives because the most problematic part of Hazard Zone right now are the vehicles. The armored LATVs with grenade launchers and miniguns, which we'll talk about in a second. Those are the biggest obstacle that will wipe your team out and you really just can't counter them without explosives. But fortunately, his bag, or excuse me, his loot crate that he can summon replenishes C5 and recoilless rocket launchers, which is huge because, well, basically it takes three rockets to take out one of those, and you've basically depleted all yours if you've killed one of them. So if you come up to another one, it can basically just kill you, and you have nothing you can do to defend yourself. So that's why Angel is so essential. Number two on that list, I consider JSP, aka Pike, to be crucial. Now, in this game, there are squad redeploys. A lot of times people like to camp or hide, especially in maps like Manifest, and maybe they're hunkering down in a building and you've gotten a pick. People like to hide in game types like this. And, well, there's no hiding from somebody that can see you through walls. So if you've happened to pick two or three people and there's one person still alive capable of reviving that whole team, you want to be able to hunt them down? Pike is the best option for that. Last up, I consider Irish to be extremely valuable for this. For none other reason than he just has all the assets you need for types of securing objectives. Whether or not it's getting down teammates and putting up a shield so you can revive them safely in open areas. Or even honestly extract some things. Because putting his shield up in front of the actual extraction VTOL is extremely smart. Not to mention his APS because people do like to shoot rockets and try to kill all of you inside of the helicopters while you extract. They don't want to throw grenades over there. And his APS combined with the shield is honestly an amazing counter to successfully ensure that you can get in there and get out quickly. So those are the three that I go to. Moving over to number two, we're gonna kind of tie into the number one right there, and this is picking the right meta. Stick to the meta. As it currently stands here at launch, DMRs and SMGs are meta. I do heavily recommend at least one person to run a really solid DMR or a sniper. If you are confident, having one of these is huge because when squad redeploys come in, People will be parachuting in. If you can pick them immediately after that, you've basically, again, forced them on the go because they don't want to contest you being a man or two down. So that is something very vulnerable. Not to mention, as well, that people like to camp on rooftops and also use the tornado, which is in pretty much every game, to kind of shoot themselves around. So the snipers are extremely useful. Not to mention, you can also generally pick off the AI from a distance. And having something like that, I consider to be a must-have. Uh, so stick to what's meta, whatever you're comfortable with, and roll those out. So an SPK, a PP29, and even the SWS are what I recommend you guys to have. Number three, as I mentioned previously, Jeeps are absolutely busted in this game type. And the reason for that is because a lot of people will not buy the recoilless right off the bat. A lot of people will not buy the C5, and there's just no way to counter them. You can steal them from the AI, and they are readily available as pickups on the map at any given time. They can be equipped with grenade launchers and chain guns, and all of you have played All Out Warfare, and you know exactly how strong those things are against infantry. It would suck to go in there, and does suck when you are the victim of one of these. So, absolutely, make sure you get a hold of them if you have the opportunity. Do not waste these. Remember, you have one life, and you can lose everything. Do not be afraid to take advantage of these. You're not scummy for doing it. And that being said, the best way to counter these is by using the recoilless. Remember, it takes three rockets to take one of these things out. That's why I prefer Angel with this loadout crate. You can use it as cover and replenish after you've killed one. And naturally, 
it, it's kind of a pain in the ass. So I would personally, if I had the ultimate setup in Dream Team, I would have two people in my squad rocking the recoilless so that you can take those out as quick as possible. Moving over to number four, guns bought. Inside of this, come with your base attachment. So if I happen to buy the SVK, and when I'm playing standard multiplayer or have my loadout built, whatever attachments I have on the gun is actually the version that you buy inside the game. So when you're going in there and maybe you have your free pistol, put that pistol with the right loadout that you like, you know, an extended mag, everything, so on and so forth, because that will actually be what you buy for Hazard Zone. So make sure you have that set up. Now, this isn't so much of a tip, but more of a piece of advice. I see a lot of people saying, hey, I, I haven't played Hazard Zone because, well, I don't have a squad to queue up with. I have yet to lose a game of Hazard Zone in solo queuing it. I haven't. The spotting system is really, really solid. You guys can, like, indicate where you're going. The scanner system built into the game that people take in there so you can see where they are and know when there's enemies using them is amazing. So that is something else that you may not have been able to pick up if you're still new to the game type. There is a scanner that comes default when you queue up, and there should always be at least one, if not two, people using these. But basically, you use them to locate where the nearest data drives are for you, and then you go and pursue them. A lot of times, they are there for you to pick up freely and with limited resistance with the AI. But if you pay attention when you're using the scanner, sometimes you'll notice that those actual circles that you're looking at are moving, which means you have located data drives, but that's a person using them. So all of this data will allow you to decide how you want to play. Do you want to push those guys and steal their drives and secure a victory? And do you want to play passively and avoid these guys? You figure that out. But that scanner is huge to know where the rest of the people are and keep track of how many squads. Remember, there's only seven other squads in there. So knowing exactly where they are and how many have those drives is huge. Like if I've wiped four teams and I see three other teams running around the map way away from me, I don't have to worry about them and they're all accounted for. So make sure you utilize that scanner and continuously keep eyes on people too. Don't just scan it. Make sure you continuously scan it and keep up with that. So that was number six right there. Don't fear soloing and use your scanner. That was both six and seven. You're welcome. Number eight right here. Pickups show on the minimap. Now what I mean by that is there are three types of pickups inside of the game. You can get the squad redeploy, which is probably the most valuable one that you can pick up. And that is basically at any given time, if one, two, or three of your squad mates are down and you secure it, you've probably noticed a pretty wicked play inside this gameplay. But at any given time, if you are the last man standing or a teammate is officially dead, not just down, you can activate a squad redeploy, which will bring them back to life and you can continue your journey and try to find success. You can basically get a do-over and your whole squad is reunited. And I think that is absolutely valuable. Number two is the Ranger one that you can locate, which is the call-in dog. And I'll talk about that in a second. And the third one is the vehicle, which is very strong, which is the LATV with the gun on it, which is huge, not only for transport, but also it is absolutely dangerous. Keep in mind, though, a little piece of advice with it. The AI do, in fact, carry plenty of rocket launchers. So you don't necessarily want to run right up on them. You're probably safer running up on a group of players than you are the AI. But as I said, these squad pickups show up on your minimap. So keep your eyes on the minimap more than you probably would in All Out Warfare. Because as you go past buildings, instead of having to go in there and loot, possibly find these power-ups yourself, you just be in the vicinity of one of them. On the outside of the building, it'll actually show you that it's inside the building. And you can go pick that up. So it's just smoother transition and less looting and it's just more linear that way so keep your eyes on that minimap because those power-ups like the dog the latv or the squad redeploy will show up on the map when you get near it all right now next up number nine as previously mentioned the rangers are located on the map a lot of people use them i personally am not a fan of them a lot of times when i'm moving into an area and i see movement i have to take a second to figure out are those players or are those ai if you're running around with a dog I pretty much immediately notice you as a threat. I know you're a player. That really just makes it easier for me to make a decision to move on you. I think rangers aren't that useful. I don't think they contribute much to the killing, whether or not you're in standard all-out warfare or inside of hazard zone. And it's just another body on the field that could be giving your position away. I just don't ever recommend you summoning one of those unless maybe you are like a man down and just anything extra would help. But me personally, I'm never gonna touch the things. 
Last but definitely not least with Hazard Zone is keep your eyes on the sky. Even right off of spawn, you can see the helicopters fly away so you can kind of know where the other players were dropped off. A lot of times they're going to find power-ups and they're going to summon in the rangers, giving their position away. They're going to call in things, so keep your eyes in the sky for those umbrellas because those are players. That's what's going to happen. They are summoning something to help them or they are actual people coming back into the fray by being redeployed. You sometimes will notice those little red like parachute icons that means they're in the process of bringing their team back and are likely all alone so if you can possibly get a hold of them and kill them before that happens you can wipe them and shut that hope down and i think that is amazing that being said when you do happen to be revived and you are brought back with a squad redeploy the first thing you need to do and this is a huge tip is cut your parachute you don't want to give your position away and you are so much easier to hit in the parachute than you are free falling so cut that parachute immediately start falling pull it right before you land and that is probably the best way to survive i have picked dozens of people off parachuting in the sky between the svk and the sws which a lot of people are using you can guarantee that that's going to happen to you so definitely when you are squad redeployed and you are coming back cut your chute and call it back in right before you land it's going to save your life so that is the end of the video guys i am absolutely in love with this if you're still curious or you have any questions or anything to contribute to other people watching please leave a comment down below say hey this is another thing that i've learned check it out it's amazing so thanks again for your love and your support i hope you guys enjoy this video subscribe take that bell and i'll catch you with another one soon